So we're going to dive in and mix our colors for our more atmospheric paintings, the ones that are going to be incorporating lower contrast and dealing with rain and mist. So the colors are going to predominantly be blues and purples and some purpley greens with neutrals. So you're not going to see a whole lot of contrast in uh, hue or in temperature. So let's dive right on in. And the first colors we're going to mix are our Terra Verts. And as we've done before, I have three different piles of Terra Verde. The first one is going to be the one that is the most purple. So it is going to be the darkest. And see how dark and purple that is. It's just slightly greenish. Then I'm going to take just what's on the knife and go to that next pile. So it still looks green, but I've knocked just the slight edge of green off. If it goes a little too dark, then all I have to do is pull some more of the green from the pile next door and just green it up a little bit. So we want subtle contrast, subtle differences between the colors. So it's still a little bit too dark, so I go with a little bit more green. There we go. So we're going to have a nice subtle difference between the one that's more purple and the one that's more green. If it still is not looking quite contrasty enough, I would pull some of that to the side. So put some of that right over here. Take some of this, and we'll make four piles instead of three. So you can see when you look, spread this out from the mass tone that it's much greener than that first one. But to make sure that you've got enough contrast going on, it does not hurt to take another one that has just a small amount of that second mixture in there. There we go. So you can see where it's a little bit different from the one that came straight out of the tube, but not quite as dark as that. And then we'll leave the red one that's just plain Terra there. Now, uh, next let's go and mix our sky colors. And one of them, we do have a blue sky because that one is going to be dealing with mist. So I'm going to mix around three different piles of the light blue and also go on and squeeze out some white for any lighter tints I might need to make. And this is going to be a little bit of the ultramarine blue and white. And then I'm going to add some phthalo to it because that is going to be one of these is calling for a lot more phthalo than ultramarine. So this is about half phthalo and half ultramarine blue, and then lightened with white. So it makes it a really nice sky blue color. And then just take what's on the knife and go to the next pile. And let's use that to lighten it up. That's 
a little on the lighter side, so I'm going to take a little more of this. Always remember it's easier to go dark slowly rather than quickly. If you go too fast, then you'll have to make corrections and it will use up more paint. And then just a tiny little bit of it into this one to have a nice light, light blue. Now, one of the other things that we're going to need to do is mix some grays because while one of the compositions has a blue sky, the other one is very full of clouds. So we're going to need to mix three piles of grays for those clouds. And we will want to have some warm ones and some cool ones. And as we've done in the past, if you've got some toric gray, you can use that. Or you can mix yourself with um, ultramarine blue, which is right here, and the Fanchon red. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with ultramarine blue. So I'm going to make my darkest cloud color. So I'm mixing for the value first. Get it down towards a darker color for our cloud. And then I'm going to dull it out a little bit with the red. So the key there is to mix for the value first and then to dull it. If you're using the toric gray, you don't have to use the blue and the red. Sick. So like everything else, I'm going to go slow on dulling it. Small amount of that red to begin with, and you can see how it's starting to dull to a grayish purple. It needs just a tiny little bit more red. About that same amount again. And if it goes too purple on you, you can always cool it down again with a little bit more blue. So this is going really purple. So I'm going to dull it with a little bit, or darken it and dull it with a little bit more of the blue. I don't want it quite as red as that. So I'm going to take just what's on the knife and go down here to mix my lighter cloud color. Because the one that's in the middle is going to be a little bit warmer. So if I need a little more, I can go back. I'm simply looking to have distinct differences in value there. Okay, and for this next one, fill some of that pile into here, but then we're going to warm it up with some of the Montserrat orange. So this is almost the same value that we just mixed next door on the right. But now I'm going to add some Montserrat orange to it, not that much, which is going to 
dull it and warm it even more. So adding the Montserrat cancels out the blue that's in there and one warms it up significantly. So there's now a nice contrast between these. There we go. Now we are also going to need a set of neutrals for our land areas and our marsh that we're going to have in the two different paintings. So I'm going back to that Italian green ochre and mixing three piles of it. And one is going to stay green ochre, and the others are going to have a little bit of the dioxazine purple violet added to them. So we'll have one that is more purple. Notice how different this is from the one that has the terra verde in it. So the purple is the same in these two, but the second color is different, and so we end up with a different mixture. Just the purple that's left, or the mixture that's left on the knife into that second one. Add a little bit more of this one up here, a little bit more of this for some contrast. So I'm going to push this one even further away. So I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that to make it even more different from those other two, yet they're still slightly duller colors, so they're not going to read as being too high a contrast for our particular light situation. The paint had some oil leaching off, so I'm just going to block it off with a paper towel, and then mix them together. So I end up with a both lighter and warmer version of my ochre. I could also have added Indian yellow and it would have done some of the same thing, but the texture of the yellow ochre is closer to what I was after in this case. So that's why I added that. You could get almost the same effect with adding Indian yellow. It would take less of it. So, one of the things I want you to do once you've mixed those colors together is to look back over here and see if there's anything that needs any adjustment. So when I'm looking at the sky colors over here, there doesn't seem to be quite enough difference here. So I'm thinking about what I might want to add to this one to dull it out a little bit more. So I'm going to take little bit of the red, I want to gray it down some more. So there's a little bit more hue in there. And a little bit more difference. You just want to make sure you don't have any big old pockets of red that are still hanging out that are going to 
throw off the color. Now, one other color that I do want to mix is more of a blue-green. So as we look at our photographs, we'll realize that we need to have a blue-green mixture as well. Some other subtle colors that we want to have, to have some differences, would be some slight mixtures of the ones that you see on here. So if we take a little bit of our uh, mixture of Italian green ochre, a tiny little bit of purple in it, and then add some of our purpley sky color. This is going to give us color for our distant land. And one of the reasons I mix those two together is they're colors that are going to be in the actual painting already, so they're going to be closely related. Then I can also take a little bit of that light one. If I want one that's a more purple mixture. And add some of our dark purple and ochre in there. A little bit more. There we go. So that we begin to have a warm and a cool of these lighter colors, the lighter tints. You could actually even go so far then to make one with our lighter yellow. Now we have three that are different, very different, but related to all the other colors we've got on our palette because they're mixed or have some common elements with those colors. So now that we've got most of our colors mixed, we can mix an additional one or two as we need along. It's time to get started with our painting. So let's get down to it. 